So in the previous video, we looked at an easy example, the potassium iodide calculation. And in this video, I'm going to start with this question here, which is um, to determine the lattice enthalpy for copper two oxide. We're given the answer. We just need to show that that is the answer. So we've got all this data in the table to process. We have to produce a labeled bone harbor cycle and we have to show the species formed at each stage. So let's start then. Remember, we're going to have our solid ionic lattice at the bottom here. So this is copper two oxide. Formula is CuO, and that's obviously a solid. Um, so we need the elements. Obviously, that's enthalpy change of formation of copper two oxide. So which element in a standard state is this going to be made from? It's going to be made from copper, solid, and a half a mole of O2 gas. We now need to atomise them both, but one at a time, remember. So we'll atomise the copper first, Cu gas. Oxygen has to stay the same. You can only do one thing at a time. And that's obviously the delta H A, the atomization of copper. And now we need to atomize the oxygen. So copper the same. So we're breaking that bond. So we're turning half a mole of O2 gas into an oxygen atom in the gas phase. So that's the atomization of oxygen. Right, now, now this is where this question becomes sort of more difficult than the previous one. If we think about the copper, if we have a look there, you can see that there are actually two ionization energies for copper. We're forming copper two oxide, so it's the copper two plus ions involved. So we've actually got two separate ionization energies to worry about. So the first one, first ionization energy is the formation of Cu one plus gas. There's the electron removed and the oxygen's still the same. So that's delta H I E one. Then we're going to remove the second electron. So this is the second ionization energy, Cu two plus gas. We've now got two electrons. Remember, we've got to show all the species formed at each stage. So we've got two electrons and we've still got the O gas. So that's delta H I E two. So the next step, we're going to turn the oxygen um, into the O2 minus ion. Now, if you look, there are actually two um, electron affinities involved here. There's the first one, there's the second one. Now, notice the signs here. I'll explain why in a second, but um, we've got a negative one and a positive one. Remember, down arrows represent exothermic processes. So this first electron affinity has to point down. So what are we going to have? What species have we got at that part um, of the cycle? Well, the copper 2 plus is unchanged. The One of these electrons has been added to the oxygen gas, so that's now O minus gas. We've got one electron left. We then have to add this electron. Oops, I've forgotten to put the label on there. Delta H E A. That's E A 1, remember. We're now going to add this electron to this O minus ion. Now, they're going to repel each other, so we've got to force them together. And that's why this process is endothermic. So the arrow goes up again. So this cycle is a bit more complicated. Just move that. So what have we got here now? We've got the Cu2 plus gas, and we've got O2 minus gas. Right, we've got everything we need now to do the lattice enthalpy. One mole of the solid ionic lattice is formed from its gaseous ions. So down it goes, and that's obviously delta H L E. There's all the numbers across the top for you. We've got the two roots, we've got the red root, delta H F equals the sum of all the components involved in the blue root. So we've got the atomization there of copper, the atomization of oxygen, 
the first ionization energy of copper, the second ionization energy of copper, and then we've got the awkward plus minus. So it's plus, but then it's, it's minus the electron affinity, the first electron affinity, and it goes plus 790 plus the unknown. We're going to put that in a bracket, work out the value, and then take it over the other side and subtract. The sum of the bracket came out at 3942. So we've taken all of that over, so it becomes minus 3942 and minus 155 minus 3942 equals minus 4097. So again, we've shown the answer to be correct. So this time, because this was a more difficult example, we are awarding ourselves a smiley face to the power 2. So here's the last example. It's, um, I'm classing it as a, a more difficult type of Born Harbour cycle question. Again, we've got to date at the process. We have to construct a Born Harbour cycle for calcium chloride. And instead of showing the value of the lattice enthalpy, we've got to work out the electron affinity for chlorine. And again, we've got the answer there. We just need to show that that's the answer. So if you want to pause the video and have a go at the cycle yourself, then restart it and we'll, um, we'll go through the answer. So the cycle starts with calcium chloride. So that's CaCl2. And obviously that's a solid. We need to do the enthalpy change of formation, so let's put that on first. So delta HF, which element is calcium chloride made from? It's made from Ca solid and Cl2 gas. We now need to atomise everything, so we'll start with the calcium. So we're going to turn calcium solid into calcium gas and we've still got the Cl2 gas and that's obviously delta H A atomization of calcium. We now need to atomize the chlorine and this is where this question starts to pose some possible difficulties so the calcium gas is the same. Right so we, if we break this Cl2 bond, uh, what we're going to actually produce are two Cl atoms, gaseous. So what this, this process is actually, I'll just show you down here, we've, gone, we've turned Cl, Cl into two Cl atoms. Now if you remember the definition for atomization, it's the production of one mole of gaseous atoms from the element in its standard state. Well this is effectively double that, so we have got two times the atomization there. So this is making this question a little bit more difficult for that reason. So we've got our gaseous atoms now, we, we ionise them. So calcium is in group 2, it's going to form a 2 plus ion, but remember we need to do it stepwise so that the first ionisation energy is the production of Ca plus gas plus an electron and we've got those two Cl gaseous atoms there. That's obviously the first ionisation energy. The second ionisation energy follows. So we have Ca2 plus gas, we now have two electrons on the line and we've got two Cl gas unchanged. So we now need to turn these gaseous atoms, these chlorine atoms into chloride ions. Now if you notice we've got two chlorine atoms which have got two electrons 
So that's what we need to produce two moles of Cl minus ions. Oh, remember the arrow goes down when it's exothermic. Just find that one, electron affinity of chlorine. That's the unknown one, isn't it? But we know that that's going to be exothermic because the atom will attract the electron. So what will that produce? That will produce, well we've already got the Ca2 plus gas and we are going to end up with two Cl minus ions gases. Another little awkward um, thing to get your head around here. Remember the electron affinity is for the production of one mole of gaseous one minus ions from one mole of gaseous atoms. We have effectively done that twice. We've got two moles. So this is two times the electron affinity. And then obviously the lattice enthalpy is the final step. The gaseous ions forming one mole of the ionic solid. So that's delta H L E. The two roots, we've got the red root, root one, and I've gone for purple this time. Root two is the sum of all these steps, like so. We'll put the numbers in now. So we've got the red root, that's the enthalpy change of formation, which is minus 795. And that equals the sum of all the others. So let's start putting them in. The atomization of calcium is 178 plus 2 times the atomization of chlorine. There it is there. So that's 2 times 121, which is obviously 242. So let's put that straight in. 242. The first ionization energy of calcium is plus 590. 590. The second ionization energy of calcium is 1145, so plus 1145. Come down this way now. Now, this is where we've got to be careful. This is the unknown. We've got to find this. And remember, there are two electron affinities involved in this cycle. So this unknown, it's actually two times the unknown. So we'll just put two X in there. And then the final thing is um, plus the lattice enthalpy. There's a the lattice enthalpy. Plus minus 2258 is obviously minus 2258. So what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate all the, um, the values for, we're going to sum the numbers, obviously we'll be left with that 2x on its own. And we're going to take them over to the other side and process it from there. So we get minus 795 equals, all those purple numbers come out at minus 103. Minus one, oh, three, and then we've still got that plus two X there. So we take this over to the other side, so it becomes uh, minus seven, nine, five, plus one, oh, three, equals two X. So two X, comes out at being minus 692 and we have to calculate the value for the enthalpy change sorry the first electron affinity of chlorine so electron affinity is always per mole well we've got two moles involved here so the unknown is actually half of this 692 divided by 2 which is of course minus three four six so that's i would class that as quite a tricky um born harbor cycle so we've got that one right and so we're going to have a smiley face to the power a couple of things in there that were dodgy shall we say to the power four so very well done